Hi, I'm Craig Shoemaker and part of the Azure Static Web Apps product team here to help introduce the new database connection feature and show you how you can use GraphQL to interface with your database. Now to set the stage for a little bit, the database connection feature allows you to work with data in your database through Azure Static Web Apps, but all without having to write any sort of backend code. So it makes it much easier and a lot of it is powered through configuration. So if we were to take a look at this little sample app that I have right now, if I click on the list button, you'll see that it goes to the database and prints up some data from the database. Well, how's this done? Let's take a look at the configuration file. And if we come over here, you can see that I have a database connection string set up through an environment variable. And then the GraphQL endpoint is exposed through this configuration section here on line 11. So the path is GraphQL. I've kept that as the default. You can change that to be whatever you would like. But now this endpoint will map to some entities that we have defined within the application. So when I come down to the entities section, you can see that I have a table called my test person table. Now that's exposed as an endpoint called person. So notice they don't have to be the same. So the endpoint, the public endpoint will be person, but that goes to a table called my test person table. And as far as permissions are involved, uh, right now I just have it set up that all requests can be anonymous. So whether that's editing the data or reading the data, but if you wanna lock this down, you can do it using the same rules that we have available for role-based security here within Static Web Apps. So let's take a look at some of the code that's required in order to make this happen. Now there's two things that I want you to keep in mind, and it has to do with how you format the request payload in order to take a query and send it off to the database or send it off to the server actually. So here I have a, a query here in GraphQL where I'm asking for all the people in the database. I'm asking for the ID and name to come back. But notice that the request payload has to be based off of a property called query. So that's what the backend server is looking for. So I'm using the fetch API just to keep things simple. I want to try and keep everything sort of framework and uh, library agnostic. So the fetch API is going against the endpoint with a post request. Once that data comes back, I can get to it through data.people.items. So if we were to look at the application again, this is what you'll get using console.table to print all that out within the browser. Now there's one more thing that I want to show you, and that is when you have to pass in an argument to your query in order to be able to have data that's going in to request data back. So what I'm looking at here is a request to get an item by ID. So you'll notice that there's this function here that passes in an ID. And just like I had it set up before, the query gets mapped to the request payload of a property called query. And then the function parameters that you wanna pass in are under a property called variables. So notice here that the ID that's being passed into my function, which is declared right up here, is passed in to this property called variables. So once you have that set up, you can then take your query, send it to the database, and the variables property will populate the parameters that you need in order to get the data back that you want. So just like we did before, we have the GraphQL endpoint, I have a post request, I'm stringifying the query, and what comes back is data.person underscore PK. So if we take a look at the application, you can see this working just as well. And here I get a single record back based off the ID of one. Now, instead of going through all the code for each one of the different operations, the update, the create, and the delete, if you go and take a look at our docs, you can see this exact same code mapped out for you. And so it'll show you how to list all items, how to get an item by ID, how to do the update, how to do the create, and do the delete. So it's all right there ready and waiting for you. Now I'm really excited about this feature because it helps you build more interactive websites, all with the ease of use through Azure Static Web Apps.